Hi everybody. Here I am once again with some cloudy water in my tank. The only thing I did was add some snails yesterday to the sump to handle some algae and I'm thinking that perhaps they're the cause of it. Maybe the increased bio load all of a sudden? Not sure, but the water's cloudy today. So a couple weeks ago I had cloudy water for about 10 days and I think it was because when I added my fish I put three of them in at once and of course extra feeding and waste from the fish caused a bacterial bloom and I suspect that was what gave me the cloudy water. So after about 10 days of this I panicked and did a whole bunch of reading and decided to order this UV sterilizer and see that whether it would handle the problem. So I ordered it and the day it arrived of course my water was crystal clear and I didn't have to use it. So I set it aside knowing that uh, eventually I would once again get the cloudy water. I had some very specific reasons for choosing this particular one. First of all it was cheap, $65 Canadian plus tax and shipping. Secondly it was a, an all-in-one unit that included its own pump and that was important because it meant I didn't have to buy a bunch of components and put them together. Uh, thirdly, it doesn't require inline installation with the plumbing. It's its own unit, it mounts separately, it gets plugged in separately, and that makes it really flexible for use. It means you don't have to cut hoses if you have a filter, or in my case, I did not want to cut the hard plumbing. Um, it's the Green Killing Machine from AA Aquariums, and I thought I would put together a little product review, so I started with the box just as I was about to open it. So here it is after pulling it out of the box. I should mention that it's 9 watts rated for up to 50 gallons, and uh, the tray is kind of a sturdy egg crate thing. Uh, it's covered with this really thick cellophane. I'm going to need my scissors to get into this because it can't be torn, and uh, really well packed. So here it is, all nice and tidy in the box. Everything's very well packed. Here are some extra sponges they included. These are the blue pre-filter sponges that go in the side of the bulb unit. And pulling the actual pump and sterilizer bulb out of the box, it feels really sturdy. It's quite heavy and looks like it's very well made. Um, a bit dusty, I'll have to rinse that off before I use it, obviously. Um, so set that aside for a second. Um, so looking at the connectors, there's also this control unit of some type. Looks to me like it needs to stay dry because there's plugs coming out of it and everything. I haven't looked at the instructions yet, uh, but it has these plugs on it. Uh, these two are power plugs, connectors. Uh, one goes to the power supply that goes to the wall. Uh, this one is from the bulb into the control box. And then finally we have this other one over here that's for the pump, so the pump into the control box. So it looks like a really nicely designed, very simple thing to set up, and I guess we'll see when I get it all together. So reading the instructions, um, it's said to put these three pieces together, the pump and the elbow and the sterilizer unit, but it came out of the box already assembled, so I didn't have to do that. All I had to do was put this smaller elbow in the top, and that is kind of the outflow for the unit. It's kind of funny, it says to refer to the picture on the box, and referring to the picture on the box, it looks to me like it's put together correctly, so that's good. So after putting everything together, um, I'm not 100% happy with this connection right here. It seems very loose to me. I've tried to lock it tight and rotate it a few times just to see whether I could get it to stay tight. And I guess we'll see. So I've mounted it on the side of the tank here and the instructions very clearly say do not mount this control unit above the tank to, all, to put it on the outside. And I'm assuming that's in case it ever falls off that it can never go into the water. Uh, the pump is not completely submerged, but the bulb is, and the instructions say to make sure that the bulb is completely submerged. So because the inlet into the pump is on the side of the bulb housing, as long as that's underwater, it'll be fine if the pump is out of the water a tiny bit. 
I've set it up here so that the outflow will just drop down into the macroalgae once it's running. And I, I think it'll work out really well here. And we'll see what happens when I turn it on. Okay, so everything's hooked up now. And you can see this gap. I'm not happy with it. It feels quite loose to me, the connection. So when you compare it to the actual power connection, that one snapped right together. There is no gap and it's very secure, but this one I'm just wondering about. Um, I'm gonna have to see how it goes when I run it. So it's all plugged in and running, and I really like the amount of flow that's coming out of here. It's just a nice gentle little stream dropping into the macroalgae, and I, I do like how it's improved the flow in this area. A little bit foamy, um, that could just be because of the, the uh, water, the height that it's falling from. Um, so it, it looks good. Um, you can see where I've got it mounted. It's on the front of the sump and that's for ease of access and because I expect it to just be temporary. If I was going to leave something like this running permanently, I would probably move it to the back just to keep it out of the way. <laughs> I have cats who like to run by here and I wouldn't want them snagging their tail on any cords, especially with that somewhat loose connection. So I'm going to run it as long as it takes to clear up this water. You can really see the, the haze on it from, from this angle. And uh, I, I guess I'll report back in a day or so and just see how things look. So here we are the next morning and uh, everything's still running. But when I came out here, I noticed that the suction cups did not hold the control box onto the wall of the aquarium. And also I've already replaced it, but the pump had also detached. Those suction cups didn't hold either. And I'm thinking that explains why the instructions say, don't put it on top. So here we are less than 24 hours later. It's actually about 18 hours later and the water has cleared up completely. It is crystal clear. Uh, it looks like a slight haze on the water. This is just the, the uh, camera. Uh, in the shimmer, but it is absolutely crystal clear. So I'm really pleased about that because the last time this happened, it went on for 10 days before I panicked and ordered the sterilizer, which then of course Murphy's Law being in effect, I didn't need. Uh, I'm glad I had it though, because I was able to use it this time. And I have to conclude that the sterilizer did something because this is pretty amazing, cleared right up. So I often get mocked for keeping boxes, but I'm glad I kept this one because I was able to look back at the video and fit everything back into the tray uh, after I cleaned it all and folded everything up. I even keep twist ties. I know that's crazy, but um, it comes in handy. The only thing I couldn't get off was this little extension. It was part of the elbow that formed the outflow and that was made of two pieces. It, it rotated, so that explains why it was two pieces. So I just shifted everything around in the box and I was able to get it all right back in there. Um, I think this is a great little design. I'm very glad I spent the $65 plus tax and shipping uh, to get it and uh, very, very impressed with how quickly it cleared up my water. I like how the water's drawn in through the bulb assembly, through the pre-filter sponge, the little blue sponge, and it's, it's such a good design. That little blue sponge there pulls the water in, so the pump being very small doesn't get gunk drawn into it from anywhere in your aquarium. So far less likely to require a lot of maintenance. Uh, I think it's a really clever design. Uh, the only thing that I couldn't really take apart was the bulb assembly itself. So I'm thinking, you know, if it's not dry in there, it's quite possible there could be bacteria that will die as it dries. And I won't really know that until the next time I go to use it. It's possible it could release bacteria into my aquarium. I guess I could run it in some fresh water first just to try and flush it out a little bit. Uh, but overall, that's a pretty minor issue, and uh, I'm, I'm, I have to give it a big thumbs up. It did the job, at least I think it did the job, and if I ever need it again, I'll pull it out of its box, all neat and tidy, and it'll be ready to go. So to recap, the Green Killing Machine from AA Aquariums, based in Connecticut. Um, reasons I like it, it's a great design. 
low maintenance because of the way the water gets drawn in through the bulb and out the pump. It's cheap, $65 plus tax and shipping, that's Canadian dollars, so for you guys elsewhere in the world it'll be less. And also the, the best thing about it, you don't have to install it in your plumbing. It's not an inline unit, it's completely separate, it has its own pump. So even if you don't have a sump, you could still put this in a regular tank that's perhaps run on with a filter uh, and deal with cloudy water without having to worry about cutting your hoses or how the heck you're going to make this thing work. So I give it a big thumbs up. I um, think it's well worth the money and I'm really glad that I'm going to have it available to me for next time. So here we are all ready to close up the box. I hope this video was helpful for anybody that's dealing with cloudy water, not sure what to do, not wanting to spend a ton of money when it's basically an experiment to see if something will work. And if you like the video, please hit like. I'm always happy to hear from you, so comments are welcome. And please subscribe if you like what you've seen. Uh, come along with me on this journey. It never ends. And thanks for watching. I really appreciate it.